Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Thursday evening here in Australia, market up again, 4.2%, over $2.3 trillion. So things are looking quite nice at the moment. I am, you know, gaining more confidence, as would most people. But, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you'd know I'm still not completely sold until i see bitcoin basically sixty four thousand and above i am still you know i have a tiny bit of skepticism still in me thinking that this could still be a dead cat bounce just a really uh sort of weird dead cat bounce dead cat bounce where it goes a lot higher than what most people would think it is i think that's highly unlikely never offering your financial advice anyway as always but it's still a possibility, but look, really, at the moment, things are looking quite good, uh, and everyone's getting excited, but whenever everyone's getting excited, that's when I start to get nervous, because at some stage, the big players are going to start to do some real heavy-handed sort of stuff, and look, it's not even them, it's just as, it, as all of these things get higher, there's going to be price levels where people go, yeah, I'm taking some profit, and some of those people might be people who have a whole lot of crypto that will then really affect the price so it's just things that i have in my mind but at the moment look things do look really good and that is really good you know we've been looking good for a while now but then we had that kind of you know probably last two or maybe sort of three weeks or so where it looked kind of bearish and like it was again gonna roll over and be that dead cat bounce but now it's definitely pumped higher so things are looking good there this is what's interesting though bitcoin dominance it is rising it just rose right there that was 0.46 now it's 0.47 people are getting back into bitcoin that's why i say never sleep on bitcoin it won't matter what happens it will be the safest appreciating asset as opposed to usdt you know and all these stable coins which just stay the same this is going to be the safest one it will still make really good games for quite some years again not financial advice just my personal opinion but it'll have the least amount of downside as well so while you know ethereum and all these other coins will outpace it and sometimes by a country mile they will also outpace bitcoin by a full country mile on the way down so for me, it's 30% really minimum Bitcoin in my just personal opinion. But, you know, if you want to have more, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. But having, you know, there's people out there who have none and look, each to their own, it's their own decision. But I just think Bitcoin, it's the granddaddy of them all. It's where it started and old doesn't mean bad just yes the newer stuff can probably do a whole lot better but this has more wisdom more time behind it and generally the old not the super old but the older they do a lot better in really tough times because they've been around they've experienced more it's you know a, a lot of these projects think of them a lot like life yes the older people are a little bit slower but they handle the really rough times a whole lot better because they just have that history and experience behind them all right moving on volume up of you know of course that's why the market's doing so well bitcoin price just under 57 uh, 55 thousand so looking quite nice i think it got up to nearly 56 thousand for a minute there so just under 57 55,000, excuse me, 55,000. So it has retraced a little bit, but look, still holding quite nicely and gas prices. I mean, you know, starting to go wild because everyone is just, again, you know, stable coins are being brought out and there. All these alts are being bought up and turned into Bitcoin and all that. So people are starting to go crazy, crazy, crazy. And, you know, fair enough. Things are looking exciting. All right, top 100. What's performed the best? Phantom, there you go, 30%. Shiba Inu, I mean, that's 100% basically in two days. This was up 70% yesterday and another 30% today. So Shiba Inu really starting to move. Arweave, I mean, Bitcoin gold for God's sakes. XLM, got a story about that. So up 14%, Pancake Swap, DYDX, Perp, Litecoin for crying out loud, up 7% out of nowhere. So look, things are looking good. But what about the downside though? What hasn't performed so well in the top 100? Doge down 4%, but they had a big pump in the last 24 hours. AVAX, Flow, look, a couple of losses. They're very, very small. Like the, the worst loss in the top 100 is less than 5%. 
So, you know, stands to show with how, you know, the market is doing like, you know, up 4%, which is not a whole lot, but it's still a good move and getting everybody excited, including myself. You know, I'm like, I'm like you and like everybody else. I may have a bit more history in crypto than you. I may not. I may have a whole lot less, but, you know, I still get excited and I also still get scared. I've just learned to curb my emotions a little bit uh, better than at least what I did four years ago. I used to get really caught up in markets. Now, you know, if the market dips by 50%, I'm not really too worried. I'm just generally buying if things are down 50 plus percent. And when things are starting to, you know, go up, uh, I, again, get excited, but just don't get too carried away. And I don't go chasing things at all-time highs. But we are going to look at something I chased. Uh, I didn't chase, but anyway, I got a position, a very small position, at quite high prices just to see if there's more hype left in it or you know maybe I got in at the wrong time because you can believe I'm not perfect and I definitely don't know it all all right let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart so look at that the mark that I said I was really looking for I wanted to see us get above 52 and a half sort of 52,800 and we just smashed right through it so I wouldn't be surprised again if we come back and retest this before we start to go higher. But look, I've said that about lots of other levels and it doesn't happen and it doesn't have to happen. But it's just, if it was to do that, if it was to come down here, test this and start to bounce up again, that's a very bullish move. That shows that there is heaps of support here and it's unlikely to go back under here anytime in the too distant future. But not if it comes down, bounces and kind of bounces around here for a little bit, then it can fall through. But if it comes down and has a proper solid bounce and just come straight back up then that is a very bullish sign but still waiting for here it is that kind of golden mark 63 8,000 you know we push it up to here and basically just say sort of 64 65,000 thereabouts we'll just round it off to sort of 64,000 I want to see us get through that before I get too carried away Look, there is big market manipulation going on uh, at times, not always. So it's very possible, again, that maybe the bulls and the institutions and all the rest of it want to push it up to 64 and get everyone really pumped, maybe 60 sort of five, and then just crash the market. Now, again, I'm, I never want to try and spread FUD, and I'm definitely not saying that's what is going to happen or even what I think is going to happen, but it's definitely a possibility. It's still, you know, cryptocurrency is still such a small space that the big players can come in and really heav heavily manipulate the market. They don't have to put that much in. It seems like a lot to us. Oh, what do you mean? You know, a couple of hundred million, a couple of billion, that's a lot of money. Yeah, to the average person it is, to these big hedge funds that have got hundreds of billions of dollars and things like that, you know, tied up. And sometimes maybe even a trillion dollars worth of assets, it's really not that much money. So that's what we need to keep in mind. Again, I don't think that's what's going to happen, but we've jumped right back up in this channel that we've been through, so it looks quite good. And again, I'm really waiting to see, can we finally break this kind of midway point? Because, you know, we got up close, no, we only just barely in the channel. Again, we got about halfway to the halfway point of the channel, drop down, and now we're sort of starting to roughly test that area again. So what are we looking at about 59 sort of 60,000 is you know halfway to the halfway point so it's in the bottom half of the channel it'll be really interesting once we start to break up to this top side of the channel and are we going to be able to do something like this again where we breach to the upside because we've definitely been to the low side of it a few times all right so um, let's have a look at Seoul so this is a position I was talking about all right, this is Seoul against the dollar. And again, this is roughly the average line. You can move this line around a little bit. You know, it's just where you can find the most sort of confluence, the touch points. So again, we've got touch points here where it constantly got rejected a few times. Touch points here where it just kept bouncing off it and rejection at the same time. Rejection, used it as support. And then again, support and resistance here. So at the moment, based on just the US dollar, Seoul, Solana, whatever you want to call it, looks like it's just under fair value. So that's why I was like, all right, I bought a position up around here about 170 ish dollars or something, uh, and it's came down to $150. And I did say at the time, look, it is quite possible it's going to come back down to around $120, $130 and form a bit of a base here for a while. Not guaranteed, not guaranteed, excuse me. 
it could absolutely take off and go on another run or it could dump down even further to maybe $70 to find some support. Again, I don't think that's what's going to happen, but I'm, you know, again, I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm going to be right, you know, all the time, let alone, let alone even a lot. I just hope that I'm right more than I'm wrong. Uh, and, you know, that is the life of an investor and a trader. You get more right, you're going to do it right. You get more wrong, then you're not going to do so good. But, you know, more so in the traders, they only need to get a couple of trades right and it'll make up for all the losses. Investing, not so much. And I consider myself an investor. Again, a tiny bit of swing trading and momentum trading and things like that on occasions, but mainly just an investor. That's what I do. And you want to get investing right more than wrong. So again, I've used this as just one point of reference. It was sitting on fair value. I got in, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if it falls lower. It has fallen a bit lower. So the dollar looks like it could be undervalued. What about against Bitcoin? Well, I brought this chart to you a while ago as well. I said, here are the points. I said, look at this. It breaks. It's breaking out to the top, but I wouldn't be surprised if it rolled over. And it rolled over and look at it. It's now perfectly sitting on this point uh, against Bitcoin. Now, it could definitely go lower. Again, it could come down to here. It could even retrace all the way down to here. Hence why I didn't put a whole lot into it because it had already pumped so hard. But there's a lot of hype and a lot of big people and uh, big money invested in Solana. So I thought, I've got to get some kind of position. There's no point in having absolutely zero. It's just whether this will be a good time uh, to get in or whether I kind of really missed that. Look, time will tell. And again, if I lose money in Solana, it won't be a whole lot. Uh, and I'll be looking to build a position in the bear market uh, whenever that may come. Uh, again, based on what I've heard from Solana. But we'll also have to see. Maybe Solana's nowhere near uh, as big as it is as it is right now in 12 months' time. It's completely died off. Again, not spreading FUD, not saying that's what's going to happen. But I've been in the space before and things that are popular this time around are no guarantee to be popular next time around. And again, we're going to do a story uh, about another coin that I've been in for quite some time and spoken about before that just hasn't performed that well. Solana against ETH. Very sort of similar story. You know, it's got some support levels and look where it is. It's just kind of holding track with uh, against ETH at the moment, but it looks like it's going to probably come down. And so I wouldn't be surprised if it has to come down and test here. And Solana doesn't really have to dive in dollar value it can still go up in dollar value and come down to here it just means ethereum outpaces it likewise in bitcoin if ethereum and bitcoin are really doing a run and solana is just kind of ticking up slowly against the dollar that's how it can easily fall down to here still making money in that monetary term the fiat terms but just losing against some other players so that's what you need to remember all right a couple of news stories i want to look at Stellar Lumens had a 12% spike after news of a partnership with them and MoneyGram. This was mentioned a while ago. Originally, it was XRP. XRP had the SEC lawsuit. MoneyGram uh, got out of that. And now it looks like they are going with Stellar. And it's just to use USDC, though. And they're using it on the Stellar blockchain for what they say, instant and cheaper transactions. Again, Jeb McCaleb, he was the one that invented uh, sort of XRP and Stellar Lumens. They're very, very similar coins. Not exactly the same, but very, very similar. Uh, very fast, very cheap. And now MoneyGram, after that partnership with XRP has fallen apart, have now hooked up with Stellar. But the scary thing is, as I said the other day, what happens if XRP still lose that lawsuit? Everyone's saying, yeah, no, nah, but you know, it's going to be settled anytime soon and it's XRP to the moon and I hope so. I've got a position in XRP. I would love for that. But gee, if it's not true, every other crypto is really in trouble outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum, particularly Stellar as they are, you know, not identical to XRP, but so similar that they would probably be on the chopping block straight after it because it would be a very easy case considering how similar they are. So something to keep in mind, but look, Stella had a bit of a pump early on for me when I got into it and it's been quiet for so long. So a 12% move is very welcome. But Stella, uh, again, this is a perfect example of a chain that's been out for a long time and has had nowhere near the movement of the newer coins this time round. So hence why I don't want to just jump into Solana and think it's the be all and end all because in four years time, if the cycles play out the same, you may see Solana still around, but it doesn't pump because the newest, flashiest, shiniest thing 
pumps way more and that is just the way these uh, markets have run at least previously right more big news metamask is partnering with bitgo hopefully i'll say this right Querdo uh, and Cactus Custody to offer compliant DeFi access to large institutions. So MetaMask making moves, you know, in, in all the right areas. And again, we, I said this the other day that it looks like the banks are understanding that they have no choice but to get on the back of crypto and particularly DeFi to start to offer some yield, i.e., uh, God, what is it? What's the other word for yield that I'm looking at? Uh, interest. That's it. Because they just can't do it the way they are now. That system is so broken uh, and done for. Again, I really don't think fiat's going to last too much longer. You know, maybe another 10, 20 years, but I don't think it lasts much longer after that. I think it, there'll still be some kind of use case, but it definitely won't be something that people will have a lot of. It'll just be something that they will turn, you know, whether it's cryptocurrencies or something else, they will likely turn it into the dollar to make their payments and then they'll go straight back out of it. That's if the dollar is even still around in 20 years time. And again, that's just a personal opinion. It's not financial advice, but very interesting that MetaMask are now helping to onboard, you know, large institutions as they say and to give them access to DeFi. how things have changed again 12 months ago you wouldn't have heard anything like that youth fashion retail chain paxan now accepts 11 different cryptocurrencies again retail they're ready to take on just about any cryptocurrency that's out there and the reason that is for is because they say they have a youthful audience that is very tech orientated and the firm has seen an increasing desire towards cryptocurrency the younger generation are just eating cryptocurrencies up they love this stuff they really really do but even the older generation are now catching on and going all right i don't completely understand crypto but I get where it's going. The young people are just all over it and they are the future. So if they're the future and they're eating this stuff up, where's the future going? Towards crypto. And again, I don't mean, I don't want people to get too carried away and think that, well, that means crypto's taken over tomorrow. No, it could still be a decade away. Maybe even two decades if there's, you know, certain regulations that aren't so crash hot. But if there's, Again, regulation is not going to be crash hot anyway. It's got to be there to protect people. And there's going to be parts of it that people really aren't going to like. But hopefully it's generally at least, you know, more than 50 to 60% good to as opposed to being, you know, 50, 60% bad and only a little bit good. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But hopefully you understand where I'm getting at. Again, I believe crypto is the future. And, you know, look how many different people are starting, not people, organizations and businesses are starting to accept it. All the surveys I've talked about before about, you know, people may not be into crypto yet, but they're definitely looking to get into it in the next 12 months. And a lot of that was from big institutions and the big end of town. It's all starting to fall in place. But I'm still not sold on this hyper Bitcoinization, you know, hyper cycle. Uh, yeah, it'll just be interesting because I get the feeling like big players and whales and that will still try and heavily manipulate the market. Because if this is really taking off and it really is taking over, they're going to want as much of it as they can, like anyone else. So, yeah, whether we still go through, you know, really brutal bear markets uh, or maybe the 50% Bitcoin uh bear market is as far as the bear market goes but we need to remember when bitcoin dumps 50 percent like it sort of did a while ago a lot of the cryptos went down by about 80 percent some even worse but most of them were about 80 or more sort of 60 to 85 percent down when bitcoin was down only 50 percent so again maybe that's now the new bear market maybe we've been through the bear market and that's what's going to repeat over the next 10 years if we're truly in a hyper cycle Right, again, Bitcoin futures premium on CME surges, hinting at institutional demand. They haven't gone away. It all gets very quiet for a while. And even when you hear about it, even when I talk about it, but the price is going down, it just doesn't have the same effect. You can hear the most bullish news, but if it's in a bearish time, it just d never feels bullish. You're just like, oh, yeah, all right, great. But, you know, everything's, you know, oh, so bad and horrible. But... When things are starting to pump up and you hear this, then of all of then all of a sudden you're like, 
it makes more of a difference. Oh, yeah, no, I get this. This is super bullish, even though we were hearing about institutional uh, you know, money flowing into Bitcoin when things were going down. It just didn't sound as good. But now that things are feeling good, it sounds twice as good. <laughs> a very uh, funny phenomenon. And that is the human psyche. That is, you know, human psyche, perfection to a T right there. <sighs> this is something that was spoken about a while ago that, a lot of the miners are actually hoarding their Bitcoin at the moment. They're not selling. They're waiting for bigger prices. I think it was yesterday. If it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before. I was speaking about this. They're actually borrowing money to pay their bills and holding on to their Bitcoin and other cryptos. So Riot Blockchain tripled production this year and they are hoarding $194 million in Bitcoin. They might be selling, you know, scantle uh, tiny little bits here and there but again the stories are that they are borrowing you know US dollars or whatever dollars from whatever country they're in to pay their bills because they believe this is going much higher now how much higher who knows you know maybe they only think uh, 70 80 thousand or again maybe some are thinking no at least a hundred and fifty thousand I guess we're gonna find out but when the miners are holding on to their Bitcoin or whatever coin that they're holding it's got to tell you something all right, I thought this was very interesting. So XRP ledger payments could go offline with a new proof of payments protocol. So basically what happens here, proof of payments protocol that will equip the blockchain to in initiate XRPL based transactions without an internet connection. So I don't really know too much more about this. I didn't go uh, in depth reading every sort of part of this and I probably will later, but I will be interested to know how that works. Because we know that there could be things that could happen, solar flares and whatever, and internet goes out for a while, maybe months and you know, possibly even years and things like that. Um, and that will this be enough to still hold uh, if the internet is down for you know whatever amount of time? Uh, I mean, I think internet it'd be pretty hard for internet to go down for any length of time, particularly worldwide. But hey, look, you never know; anything's possible. All right here is the coin that I wanted to talk about. So DeFi Yield Protocol partners with Kyber DM to boost DYP token liquidity on Avalanche. Kyber DM had a lot of hype around it back in 2017, 2018, even through the bear market. And I mean, it's just, I don't want to say it's dead in the water, but it really hasn't done much. I mean, it's partnered with every sort of blockchain and providing liquidity all over the place. And the price has just been getting absolutely hammered it's still going a little bit up in dollars but you know it's struggling to really keep pace with the dollar but it's been absolutely hammered and murdered by bitcoin and ethereum you know hence why i say all these coins that you're into now will seem great but will they be able to survive into the next uh you know bull market if there is another if there is a bear market after this and then another bull market because Kyber was one that I would have bet my, you know, bottom dollar on, as they would say, and it just hasn't done well. Let's go and have a look. Here's KNC versus the dollar. So since way back here in 2017, had its big pump, and look, boom. Now it has found a bottom, sort of down here, and what was that? About sort of 10 cents. So it would have been good to pick up some Kyber at 10 cents. But I mean, it's definitely been moving up, but it has done nothing special. This is a very, you know, usually you want to see these lines more on about a 45 degree angle or if not more, and that's how you know things have got some real hype behind it. It's a steady grower, but gee, outside of that, not a whole lot going on. And at the moment, it might be about fair value, possibly slightly underpriced, undervalued. Now again, this is still a right on the dollar value. You'd, most people would say, hey look, going from, you know, 10 cents to $1.70 is pretty good this is crypto that's really not that good it's taken it nearly two years to do that two years coins that do well literally 100x that so let's go to knc versus eth and same thing 2017 it did well and then it's just been getting lower and lower and lower we got that pump and that was that kind of DeFi pump and everything that was happening and now it's just getting lower and lower it is setting in lower lows 
this is unfortunately looking like a, a dead project. That's not to say it couldn't turn around and suddenly there'd be some really great news, but it is just, it's barely holding on against the dollar. It's making small gains against fiat and it's getting absolutely caned by Ethereum. And last but not least, again, have a look at Bitcoin. It was way up here and it's been going low. It's set a low here and it has been getting higher. But look, it had again just that big pump and then it just got absolutely trashed. And now it's just kind of traveling sideways, looking like it's most likely going to probably come down and test this, if not maybe even this, and possibly set in an even lower low. So I haven't sold my Kyber network. You know, it, it's in profit, but hardly any profit. But I just, I am really worried about this project. It's not enough that they just keep making these new partnerships. That's not enough. They need to get back to their marketing team and say, hey, what is going on? What do we need to do? And, you know, some kind of real new partnership, not just, okay, we're offering liquidity on another chain and on another chain because they're just pushing the same liquidity around basically is all that's happening. I am really worried for Kyber Network. It had so much hype around it in 2017 to, and even, even sorry, uh, and even in two, early 2020, people were still somewhat excited by it. But gee, it just, yeah, again, this was that whole 2020 thing. So people excited and just, yeah not looking great i'd love to know your thoughts you know is there anyone watching who's even still in kyber network or even remotely excited by it i mean i'm in it but very little gets me excited at the moment because it just looks horrible on the charts it's never too late to turn it around but i hope whoever's you know not whoever but the creator and the people you know running kyber network they got to go back and have a real hard look at what's going on and understand that you know, offering liquidity to another chain and another project is not enough for Kyber to survive. They need something else. It needs some new life put in it or it really is just done. This looks like, uh, you know, a heartbeat. Beep, 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 you know, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Should all be on that game train at the moment, unless you're in Kyber Network, then not so much. And I'll see you next time.